Hello, how are you today? Hopefully you are doing well. We will start with a new lesson, reproduction. Can you stop the video here and have your observations on these pictures? After your observation, you must have noted that the new plant that are uh, starting to grow, they do require the parent plant. Reproduction is that process by which an organism produces its offspring. It is that biological process by which new individual organisms' offspring are produced from their parents. There are two forms of reproduction, asexual and sexual. Sexual reproduction is a reproduction type in which two cells are involved. These two cells are the male and the female cells. The male cell is known as the sperm cell while the female cell is known as the egg cell. When the sperm cells joins the egg cell, this is known as fertilization and after fertilization the new individual starts to grow. The new individual will receive some characteristics or traits from each parent. A trait is any characteristic of a living thing. For example, a plant may be tall and have pink flowers. Hide and flowers here are traits that may be passed to offspring from the parents. Asexual reproduction uh, is the production of a new organism from a single parent. It produces a new offspring that has the same genetic information as the partner. So basically it's the copy or photocopy of the parent. Since no male and female sex cells combine during asexual reproduction, so there is only one parent involved in this reproduction. Genetic information from the same parent will pass on to the offspring and it's identical to the original parent. So we see here types of reproduction. Asexual reproduction includes only one parent, involves only one parent. There are no sex cells needed and the offspring is identical to parent and there's no mixing of traits because only one cell is being used. Sexual reproduction involves two parents, sex cells are needed, offspring different from the parent. So traits is passed or traits are passed to the offspring. That's why the offspring is different from the parent. There are several methods of asexual reproduction shared by a wide variety of organisms. We'll talk here first about the splitting. Most unicellular protists and bacteria reproduce simply by splitting into two cells. Before splitting, the organism copies its own genetic material. The two new offspring organisms will then have a copy of the genetic material, exact copy that they need to carry out life processes. On the other hand, we have budding. Some organisms such as nidavian sponges and some fungi, they can produce through budding. Now, during budding, a small part of the parent's body grow into a tiny and complete version of the parent. As you can see here, a tiny bump appears on a hydra and then it starts to develop into a bud. This growing bud will break off into an independent hydra. Sometimes, in other cases, the bud breaks off from the parent organism and continues to grow. You can see here a starfish going through budding by breaking up and then the new parts starting to grow. So this is another example of asexual reproduction. There are other also some uh, species like fish, insects, frog and lizards. They also go through asexual reproduction different ways. Uh, sometimes the female, they lay eggs and these eggs are unfertilized. For example, we have the honey bee. The queen lay eggs and some are fertilized and others are not. So the fertilized eggs develop into female or worker bees, while the unfertilized eggs, they become male or the drone bees. Plants can also undergo a form of asexual reproduction that is known as vegetative propagation. It's a sexual reproduction in plants that produces new plant from either leaves, roots or stems. Many plants commonly reproduce this way by producing runners. Runners are plant stems that lie or under the ground and they sprout up as a new plant. 
runners can uh, also grow downward from hanging plants. Strawberry plants, as you can see here, uh, they are uh, the one that can reproduce using the runners. Now we might have a question in our mind that why some organisms they reproduce asexually while others reproduce sexually. Well, our, an organism that reproduces asexually actually does not need to depend on another organism. It's quite easy work. Organisms uh, that reproduce asexually tend to be well suited to their environment and produce equal well suited offspring. It's since it is only one parent involved and will be the exact copy. You can see here how convenient and easy it is to go through asexual reproduction. Uh, this is an example of bacteria splitting and reprodu uh, reproducing asexually. On the other hand, we have the sexual reproduction. The sexual reproduction, you know, the offspring is not exactly the same to either of the parent. There are two cells involved, so some of the uh, offspring will be smaller, some might be larger, others can be faster or slower. As we know that traits are passed in sexual reproduction, traits are characteristics. For example, the ability to run fast is a trait and it's an advantage for some organisms such as this deer. Now some deer might not run faster and they are likely to be captured by their predators. So in this way, the faster deer may survive more frequently than the slower deer and over the time the fast deer will reproduce and pass on this trait to their offspring.